Hey guys, welcome back. It is October, which means it is Halloween time, so I figured it's time to make a Halloween decoration. The decoration will center around one of these things, a PIR module. Now, you can get them little like this guy or big like this guy. The little one is much more compact, but the big one is more complex and has more options. You can set the sensitivity. I think we're going to go with the small one for this project because I think it's just best not to be able to see it. So what will this thing be controlling? Well, I have this skull. It's made of plastic, it's pretty robust, and it's also hollow. So I figure we hide the PIR sensor somewhere underneath, and then drill out the eye sockets, and then put some red LEDs. I think it'll look great. So first let's go through my LED bucket and find a suitable LED. Now I don't have anything that was ideal, but close enough would be these 10 mil diffused RGB LEDs. The first thing I want to do is to check what the voltage drop is when the current is roughly 20 milliamps. 20 milliamps is a typically known value to be a safe current for these little LEDs to handle. So there you can see I've got about uh, 22, 20-ish milliamps. And it looks like we have a forward voltage of about 2.3. But I need to confirm this with a multimeter because uh, these modules can be inaccurate at times. So I got 6 volts. I'm planning to run this off 4 AA's, so 6 volts. We minus the forward voltage of the LED, 2.25 volts. So we get 3.75 volts. We use that number uh, divided by the current to attempt to find our resistor size we're going to need to drop the rest of the voltage. So you go 3.75 divided by 0 0.02 and that'll give us yeah, 187.5 ohms. Now I need to find something that's close to this. It doesn't have to be exact. What's 5 ohms between friends? So I have 180 ohms here. I'm going to pull 2 out because we need uh, two eyes, and we're going to be running them in parallel. We could run them in series and use a, another resistor, a different resistor, but I think uh, I like to run things in parallel. So first things first is we want to breadboard up our circuit just to make sure that everything works. It's the correct brightness. You can see I have my six volts there, and we're dropping, we're, we're, get, we're getting roughly 40 milliamps for both. Put our PIR system uh, sensor into the mix. I'm going to give it some uh, some ground and then some power, but uh, I actually plug the power into the ground by accident. We use a 2N7000 MOSFET to try to control these LEDs using this diagram here. The output pin of the PIR will go to the gate of the MOSFET, and I use a 10K resistor to pull the gate low to make sure that the MOSFET is in the off state if the PIR doesn't determine a state. Now you'll see there's a little bit of funkiness that goes on with this and we'll talk about that when it comes up. But yeah, for if you're doing this at home you can use pretty much any um, signal transistor or any MOSFET you want because the, the the deal is that there's not that much current. We're only dropping, we're only uh, pulling 40 milliamps when both of them are on. Not a big deal. So the gate's floating here. So if I take the gate and I put it to ground, there we go. You see it's off, but you see it's a little uh, it's a little pinky. It's because it's uh, it's leaking a little bit of current, which is turning on the LEDs very slightly. But I actually don't mind that effect. I might look at it in a later video to see if I can correct it. But actually, it looks pretty good. So here I'm putting the uh, 10k pull down resistor on the gate, and I have to tie the ground together there we go so there you have a little bit of leakage current so it's uh, the LEDs are on a little bit I think it's because we're past the breakdown uh, voltage of the body diode but I'm not sure but either way it, it works just fine so there I put the PIR sensor into the gate of the MOSFET I give the PIR sensor an actual power this time and there we go you can see approximately what it's gonna look like so now I'm just going to check real quick to make sure that my setup will work with the batteries, which it seems to be working. 
And now I go through the tedious task of building up on a Vero board or prototyping board. I'm not really sure what this board is called. There's where our two resistors are going in. I'm going to tie them directly to the power like you saw in the diagram. Putting some pin headers here, I, I'm trying not to solder too much directly to the board. So I kind of want pin headers for the f both LEDs. So that would be these four. So both LEDs, power and ground. And I'm putting the MOSFET directly into the board because, well, that component's really cheap. It's also kind of hard to find a socket that fits the MOSFET quite well. I've tried those, uh, the DuPont females, but the, the pin connection isn't very positive considering the MOSFET's legs are so skinny. There you saw I put the pin headers in for the um, PIR sensor. But if you notice, the LEDs have legs the PIR sensor has legs, but I've got pin headers in place, so I'll show you what I do to fix that. I'm going through the tedious process of adding a jumper wire and soldering onto the Vero board without um, trying not to lift some pads. I, I think I managed not to lift any pads, so that's pretty good. If you're a normal viewer to this channel, you know that I lift pads on these things all the time. I'm sure you guys do as well. So here it is. Just uh, This is going at 10 times speed, by the way, if you're wondering how fast this is going. I think this whole project from beginning to end took me about maybe an hour and a half, something like that. But uh, mind you, I wasn't going super fast. You saw me add a dab of glue to the battery box there. That's just because the wires are super old and the insulation is starting to fray. I'm looking for offcuts here and there for my LED legs and stuff to um, use as wire on this board. Sort of trying to waste not want not type of thing, but also I'm, I'm very cheap to dig into my expensive-ish silicone wire. There we go. I have to mark where the positive and negative is, so I color in the uh, terminals as well. Put my markings in. I'm very bad for forgetting these things so that's why I did that. Now here we go. So I have these female pin headers and I'm sticking them at a certain distance apart and cutting some wire. This is, I believe this is 30 gauge um, silicone wire. So not much wire there at all. However it is um, very, it's like 20 milliamps so you don't really need a lot of wire. Just tinning the ends here and tinned the pin headers and now you'll see I'm actually building myself a wire harness. I have some uh, heat shrink tubing there. I have red for the positive and the other two will be negative. So this is for the PIR. I have my heat gun coming out here. Shrink the heat shrink. Make sure you put your uh, tubing on first. So the PIR, uh, as long as I know where the positive is, I can line it up that way. You don't really need to know where the signal and the negative is. Here we go, pre-tin again. Now these connections aren't super solid. They're literally just tacked together, but it's enough, actually. You don't, you don't really need much more than that. Back when I was building quads, uh, Bruce Simpson on uh, RC Model Review's channel this is how he did all his connections on the quads and they're just fine. I'm leaving in a little bit of the uh, me messing up here because uh, well nobody's perfect and I figured you guys will want to know what my process looks like. So I'm going to do the same thing but with the LEDs. Now I really like this kind of setup because it means that if one of my LEDs burns out or if I want to use the board for something out for something else or if I want to change the color of the LEDs I can just make multiple little wiring harnesses and I can use the same board the same setup for everything in fact I think I might do a series on um, maybe an upgrade to this decoration and with that upgrade I'll probably build a board and have it made by whoever maybe JLC maybe someone else to test out someone else because I feel like there's some good potential here 
to have a battery powered PIR circuit for all sorts of things. Plus, the PIR only costs like a buck or something like that. So, a dollar for that, you know, a dollar or so for a circuit board, a couple little passives, and a little bit of silicon, and there you go. So, here I'm making the other circuit, or the other eyeball, I should say. Same process. But again, you can see this is uh, this is something you can do while relaxing. I, I was listening to music, listening to podcasts. That's why I'm doing this voiceover video, which is a little odd for my channel. But I figured this is the right way to show you, uh, show you the whole project from beginning to end, um, with only speed editing and a little bit of voiceover for context, because then you get an idea of the amount of work it takes and how finicky some parts can be. So here I'm doing a dry fit. I'm using some um, low self discharge nickel metal hydrides from Amazon. I actually love these batteries, so they will not be in the skeleton for Halloween night because uh, I would probably cry if someone stole the skeleton and stole my cool batteries with it. So here you go, you can see I'm testing the PIR. The PIR, if it acts a little funny when you first connect it, uh, that's totally normal because it needs to initialize first. Also, I was moving around, so I wasn't sure if I was getting, um, I was making having problems with it, but here we go. It works just fine, it's super sensitive. Seems to work great. So next is the mechanical build. I just measure out my LEDs there. And uh, I figured to find the right place to drill, I would use a little bit of this, um, these uh, post-it notes. And then I would use um, my knife there as a starting point. And here I am cutting through the plastic. Now, there's probably a better way to do this. You should probably drill a couple pieces. And in hindsight, I probably should have uh, made this hole a little bit bigger because my giant hands don't really fit. But uh, yeah, just patience and a brand new blade and you will make your way through. Just be careful not to cut yourself if you do do this at home. There we go, so I have a little flap open. I have these step bits. These uh, step bits are the best um, drill to use on thin material. It's, they're amazing, you can pick them up from uh, China for not too expensive, especially if you're gonna be drilling plastic with it. I also put uh, some pilot holes, and I drill some holes here to build a, uh, a cheap latch to keep this together. I want this to be shut, um, and the black paint was peeling off a little bit, so I just sharpie it in. If you really cared, you could uh, you could use some black paint. And here I am shoving the LEDs through. So they're a tight fit, and they will fit in there perfectly. And you can see already, it's looking fantastic. I cut a little groove on the side there to run the wires through. And we're just going to do a quick test hookup. So using my sticky tack, we're going to put some batteries in here. And there we go, it works. Pretty good. Trying to play with the position. Yeah, yeah, it seems to work. Freaking amazing. So now I need to secure all this a little bit better, so I'll remove the batteries out of here put the board into position, I put it on the side, and I'm just going to lay a big bead of hot glue, which is great because it doesn't seem to be hot enough to melt the plastic, and it sticks really well. I actually got a whole bunch on my fingers and maybe burnt myself, but that's part of the risks. Then I'm trying to decide how to mount the PIR and where to mount it. It has to be forwards, and I kind of want it replaceable if I fry it. So I actually put glue only on the connector of the harness, and so I can actually pull the PIR sensor out of the harness if I want to swap it out. Now a little bit of a cleanup later, and I'm ready to mount the battery box. So again, a big gob of hot glue, stuff it in the other side of the skull. Another gob in the front there, actually a pretty big gob in the front. I come back when it's dry. It takes a little while, especially when you're using as much as I am. Now here's why I'm saying the hatch should be a little bit bigger because I can just barely squeeze my hands in there. So I got one, two, three, and four. 
and no on off switch on this thing once the batteries are in they're in now I'm gonna plug back in the PIR that I unplugged because I was afraid to pull the wires apart and here's where those holes will come in handy you just make a little hook at the end of your uh, zip ties there run it through there oh I see a little bit of flashing left I guess that's what happens when you do this live so there you pull your zip ties through and then lock it down make sure that wires are in the right holes use flush cutters when you cut the zip ties so it doesn't cut you it looks great so here's what the finished product looks like um, this is a moderately bright lighting and you can see it's a big difference when it turns on from when it's off and here's in lower light same deal here and you see the whole skull lights up so that's it for the project I hope to see you guys on the channel in the future so if you want to see improvements to this or if you want to see um, different projects in the future make sure you're subscribed put a like put a comment below and thanks again for watching